Hello, I'm Thomas Carruthers. I'm Will Legator. And today we're talking about a favourite, a deep, very high favourite on both, for both of us, the wonderful, homegrown Brastoff. No bloody money, no bloody job, and what are you going to do? Juggle! Bit clumsy with the crockery, old Sandra. Woo! Ten years ago, you were so full of fight. Now you just blow your bloody trumpet. It's a bloody euphonium! Gloria Money. You had it. Grand bus station. It were top half only. Do you want to come up for a coffee? I don't drink coffee. I haven't got any. Say no to bloody blackmail and yes to keeping this bit alive! OK, lads. Let's do it. Directed by Mark Heyman. Uh, oh, the year's slipping me. What's the year? 96, is it 96? 96, yeah. 96. And it follows the Grimethorpe, uh, sorry, Grimsby, and then Grimley, sorry, Grimley, and it's... it's a Grimsby? Key. No, because it's an amalgamation in, yeah. in real life of Grimthorpe and Grimsby. <laughs> and this is traditionally a, a male-only excursion. <laughs> New lass on board, is she? Well, as you know, that girl blows flugel like a dream. <gasps> At your age! <laughs> Sex, drugs and rock and roll, eh, girls? I think we can do without drugs and rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grimly Colliery Band, uh, as they uh, face down pit closures in the mid-90s, so this is not the... Billy Elliot, 80s, big strike era. This is the, it's going to end, when's it going to yep. end era. Uh, I'm sure we'll get to Billy Elliot. I, 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 do, we both look, I love Billy Elliot. Do you love Billy Oh, Elliot? yeah. I mean, you can't be Billy Elliot. Can you? Um, yeah, no, this is the tail end. This is the walk, dead, dead men walking, uh, <laughs> to put it horribly, uh, period of the, Pit closure um, scenario, and we follow Pete Postlethwaite as Danny Almondroyd, his son, uh, played by Stephen Tomkinson. We have Jim Carter, Amelda's wonderful husband. We have yeah. <laughs> uh, Ewan McGregor, and the sort of the story begins when the uh, wonderful Gloria uh, Gloria returns to Grimley, and uh, oh, what's she doing? <laughs> Why is she there? Um, what, what a wonderful film. We both greatly love it. Um, do you remember the first time you saw Brastoff? I do. Uh, oh, it must have been early teens. This... Yeah, this was a young one. It was, yeah, you need to been watch around, Brastoff. Been around a while, in it? <laughs> well, it's, it's Yorkshire yeah. family, isn't it? You brought up to watch Brastoff. Yeah, you're goddamn right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I saw the, uh, I saw it. It gets done a lot more now. In um, it got turned into a play in yes. the early two thousands, I think it was. And um, so I, I've been to see a few amateur productions actually, and and uh, they're always they very do. good when they have the band. Uh, the uh, I went yes. to Wakefield. Did you go to Wakefield when they did it? Uh, I went to do College Pontefract when they did it. Oh, yeah. And but they uh, didn't have they a good had, brass band, did they? They had they had Mikey who who plays, um, yeah. and he was very very good, but. The rest of the time, it was just the, the speaker and someone going like that. Right. Yeah, I can imagine with the full band there. It's it was a, lovely. Very good. Um, the, at the time that we're recording this, it's still Corona, and there should have been, um, on the 16th of April, uh, a Royal Albert Hall live performance of it with yeah. the Grand Fork Colliery Band, as well as... Uh, who are the classical uh, conductors? Uh, so, unfortunately, yeah, that got cancelled. I don't, I can't remember what anniversary it was for. What would it have been? 25th. Be 20, just short of 25th anniversary? Yeah, just short of 25th. Who knows? Opening line, all of fame. Bastard. What a way to start. Can't beat it. Great. 
quiz question. Well, it's not a big quiz question because you've just rewatched the film. But when does he? Where, who's saying bastard and why? Oh my! Um, it's Steve. It's it's not. Is it not? <laughs> it's Jim Carter when he's doing his hair with his knife, right. and then he gets messed up. Oh, bastard! Is in a way, Jim Carter saying bastard is like the Yorkshire version of Hugh Grant going fuck, fuckity fuck. Um, in cock or weddings. Yes. Uh, we don't need to go on another. We've just done an hour 50 on pissing about time. It's about, it's about time we, we stop doing bloody middle class. Oh, 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 I can't, oh, look at me. I'm going back in time. Get some real bloody problems in your life like these did. <laughs> um, also, I think it's fair to say, you know, we're not putting it, we're not putting it on. I think I, I definitely come from a mining family. Uh, me, me, my great granddad were down the pit. Me, my granddad were down the pit for um, a period of a period of time before he um, obviously got a better job. And um, yeah, no, it's, it's yeah, no, uh, I'm exactly the same. I'm, I'm from the mining family too. Yeah, Upton is is my uh, where the where we beckon. Um, Not sure where well, mine, well, mine were Ponty, Nottingley area. Uh, so that would have been where well, you've got all sorts of. Yeah. Our station surrounding there, and I'm obviously very close to the National Coal Mining Museum. The best day out you any are. child can have. I used to, we used to go to the National Coal yeah. Mining Museum all the time, and you could get a, you could buy a bag of coal. <laughs> <laughs> Went uh, for Father's Day, um, and it was like a World War Two experience, mm. and you all got dressed up, and they served you a pie and mash and jam roly poly and sang Barry Lynn. But have the been portions down? they gave have you, you been, were tiny. You... Oh, that's I have been, of course I've been down. It's wonderful. I wouldn't, it's I can't, very good to get the I, tour, I, yeah. I very much hope that my kids, that the National Coal Mine Museum is still around and I can take my children down the pit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and they won't say it's boring. I'll, I'll teach them right. YouTube comments. Pete Postlethwaite and Stephen Tunkinson are father and son in this film. Well done. Is that... What's it? Uh, I love the right, UKIP. Yeah. Point. I love the UKIP colours. Whether it was intentional or not. Um, I've got a few comments here from the American trailer, and they clearly didn't know how to market it. The first line is, "A sexy new comedy from England." <laughs> <laughs> and so most of the comments are, "This is sexy. They don't even talk about pit closure. That's what it's about." Um, <laughs> yes. So most of it is dripping into that. How did Obi-Wan went from band player to Jedi Knight? Uh -huh. oh, oh, oh. We, right, after doing this, we're coming up to our 50th episodes. I think we could, we've got this, what are the categories of YouTube comments? It's ha ha ha. Do you not, do you remember election where the first time I we can't. heard and they said, oh, look what Ferris is doing now. And we all laughed. Yeah. But now every week it's, oh, what's, I thought Leonardo was fighting a bear. Why is he on a Titanic? Yeah. It's not clever. It's not, it's not <laughs> witty. Anyway, Stephen Tomlinson. Is it, is it Tomkinson or Tomlinson? Tomkinson. Because nobody knows. <laughs> Stephen Tomlinson's she eyes during that scene. Amazing. Simplified, understated acting. Shame he didn't do more. And Mr. Postlethwaite, genius. I know exactly what scene they're on about as well. Go on. Because it's just, it's when they're, they're playing outside the hospital. No. Oh. It's, it's the oh. speech. It's the oh. big speech. I thought music mattered. We'll get to it. But not um, as much as people. Oh, it's good. But it's when good. it comes to losing their will to live. Here's it your quiz question. Steve. Here's your quiz question. That famous speech got sampled for what classic 90s track? Oh, was it Hadaway? It was Tub Thumping by Chumba Wumba. I get knocked down. Get knocked down. <laughs> and I get up again. And it, <laughs> starts, and it starts off with, I thought music mattered. Does it, bollocks? And then, and then, and then they do. <laughs> Brilliant. Chumba Wumba. I watched this movie for, a, for the first time a few days ago. And when it ended, I immediately thought, so that's why they hate Thatcher. God damn right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easily it could become a, we hate Margaret Thatcher <laughs> But we will get to it. Uh, Pete Postlethwaite will be missed. There's a reason Spielberg called him the best actor in the world. That's true. 
Steven Spielberg called him the best actor in the world. Really? Well, I mean, he's pretty, pretty good. Yes. Uh, not sure too many will miss Margaret Thatcher, though. A lot of, lot of Thatcher bashing in here. Um, Eric Queer. I am from Argentina. This movie made me dream. Because here, our ex-president did the same like Margaret Thatcher. Thanks to the cinema. Are you from England? So some good points. Some random yeah. questions. <laughs> Bit of a jumble. Bit of a jumble. I certainly don't admire what she did. That's it. That's all they've put. That's all they've put. Best 10-minute stretch, William. Oh, right. Let's go down my contenders. Shoot. So we... We've got, or oh, I think that might be it. Um, I'll just do my best ten-minute stretch. Oh no, I've got two. I've got, I've got three I have... nominations. Right, I'll do. I'll do me me first nomination, uh, which is, um, um, him doing the, Mister, what's, what's he called? What's Chuckles. the clown called? Mister Chuckles. Uh, Mister Chuckles. What are you going to do? Fucking <laughs> juggle. <laughs> Hello, we'll get to that. Oh, Sandra's oh. clumsy with her crockery. Sandra's, she is. It, it very nearly goes into. Well, I mean, it's, I'm surprised it smashes on the fence. Yeah, Pete, but, don't uh, care. That, it's go, it's going crying. from Mr. Chuckles in the church mm. doing his rant about Thatcher, going into the suicide. suicide attempts, going into creeping in Pete Bosworth. So, well, then it, oh, that's for me. That's good. Also, is this man bothering you? Of course, who's bothering me? It's <laughs> me, Dad. Second contender is the the concert at the end, going into Pete's speech. Yes. yes. But, uh, though, for me, those are the two. They're the best two. Ten minute stretches. I, I, uh, yeah. My three nominations are. I, I split up the suicide. All right. I went. Suicide for single minute and Harvest Festival in favourite. But let's put it in a nomination yeah. for 10 minutes because I think you're right. Oh, yeah. That decline. Because you, I think you need to see him having that rant at the kids in the church. But yeah. And Thatcher's still lit. Oh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> My, and, and I think you're right with William Tell into the speech. Again, I split it up. But uh, no, you're right. The whole Royal Albert Hall um, sequence of William Tell. Yeah. Uh, my two nominations are Concerto de Orange Juice. <laughs> Orange Juice. I think that's one of the most beautiful <laughs> it pieces is. of music ever written. And she I said that all wobbly. Oh. And she, <laughs> Arthur Mullins. I think I want that played at my funeral now. I've, I've had this sort of thought for a while, but I think I'm certain on it now. I, I, I do. Yeah. And uh, I've uh, one of my, even one of my characters in a TV show I wrote. He had a whole speech about how he wants that at his funeral. I was saying, I was saying Tributes is very, very brassed up. It is very brassed up. But that's not Tributes. This other oh, it's not show, it's another <laughs> right. show I've wrote called Autumn's oh, right, Agency, which is oh, uh, set the in non -comedic the... non-comedic one. The, it's, well, it's, it's vaguely comedic. It's, it's not, not to dry. have jokes in if it's written <laughs> by you. Well, you can't help it. You've got to have a gag it. I'm addicted. Uh, I'm addicted to gags. Um, <laughs> some other people are addicted <laughs> to gags. Yeah, that's... Uh... Uh, no, but it's very fitting because it's set in that sort of late 80s into the 90s uh, period of... Well, we talk about political correctness now, but that sort of waning era, we follow Len Orton, who's a talent agent, and he's got a few clients, and he's got Gordon Bennett, who's your Bernard Manning type, who... Yeah. He's slowly realising that he can't be calling people all racial slurs live on telly. Uh, and and it's, as we go into the 90s. And anyway, anyway, hopefully the audience will see it one day. But if not, don't steal the idea. Um, yeah, Concerto de Orange. Uh, and Saddleworth, the whole uh, getting mm. drunk slowly. Yeah, sort of wonderful oh, brilliant. Sequence. Yeah. Um, especially by the end. They, they wouldn't play badly. The band that they got, the Grand Fort Colliery Band, they, yeah. they, didn't, they didn't refuse. But they were <laughs> like, I can't, I can't play badly. They just couldn't do it. It's one of those weird things. Whether, whether it was their own pride or not, they, they I were see like, what you mean. They found it I, I like to, to play badly. I like to try and sing just flat sometimes, just for a bit of a joke to annoy people. But it is difficult. 
I think it's more difficult if yeah. you can sing to sing badly on purpose. When I try to sing badly, I always do the whole overacting thing of I will, 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 and I'm never like hitting bad notes intentionally. Yeah. It just I hit bad notes sometimes. <laughs> but um, yeah. So uh, okay, so let's break these down and Concerto de Orangeways, including the introduction of Gloria. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, oh, is your mind still on that pitch? <laughs> oh, that, oh, I love that a little look. Oh, <laughs> he he oh. can't help it. Gloria, <laughs> Gloria Stitz. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, yes, and the introduction of Gloria. And I don't think you do guess. Maybe I'm just stupid. Yeah. But you don't guess. What, that you, she's there to close the mind? She's, very, she's dressed up very well. Oh, yeah. I, think, I, I don't think you could guess at Orange Wes. No, no. I think you guess. I think you guess at um, obviously when she's in a room and she's got that computer and she's dressed at nines. But anyway, uh, and then obviously you definitely guess at um, that uh, reviewy thingy. <laughs> we'll get to that in change. Um, I'm the best actress. I like that one. That's uh, is she in it. No, I'm just I'm just quoting oh. the reasons why I don't mind that episode. No, oh, it's a great episode. Uh, we are, of course, referring to The Winner and The Winner Is. And you can watch that episode. Go to You can either find it in all episodes, uh, season three, uh, or you can find it in um, all TV ranking episodes. Go down to our playlist. I say, I noticed you, you've... You've uh, jumped up you've the done playlist. it up, haven't you? There's, uh, there's, uh, everything's in a two playlist, because you got... Yeah? I'm a very oh, yeah. anal man. I, I like things to be very specific. Um, Which yeah, leads I'm, us on. Two. Oh, no, we're still, oh, we're still on this category, but I thought that might have been... That, that would it be might have been a segue. nice... Yeah. But we don't do segues. We, we, we don't. Just we ramble. Don't. Uh, so, yeah, no, I very much enjoyed the whole saddle with um, getting pissed. But yep. I, I think, as much as I love Concerto de Arantres, I, think, I don't think you can beat Ryan Lab at all, especially if we're including well, Danny's speech in it. Yeah, and what well, finishing with Land of Open Glory as well, which... Oh, Land I, of Open I, Bloody Glory. I love that song so much. It's great. And those lovely, painful title cards that come up. Dun, 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 dun. Um, okay, then, yeah, no, no, you're right. All right, let's do Tom's really specific favourite part of the film. One of my favourite gags ever in film history is, you get used to it, is when they're talking and you think that they're just talking over one garden wall and it's revealed the old, reti- yeah. the old sacked retired <laughs> man reading this paper. <laughs> you get used to it. I've always found that hilarious and funny. Um, I think it's wonderful. And, and it's a bit like a naked gun joke. <laughs> Half expect him. I can't hear you over the shooting. <laughs> um, I love every time Jim Carter and his wife pass on their way to work. Uh, hello, evening, love. Evening, morning, morning. That's lovely. And then, okay, juggle. Throw in the plate. <laughs> um, oh, Jesus. Oh, uh, can women do that? Piss in the wind. <laughs> I like that one. It's great bit. Great bit in the car. Great humour. It's great humour. Um, you know, uh, she can blow a flugel like a dream. Daddy Almondroid <laughs> at your age. Uh, we talked about this before on the show. Maybe the maybe not the sexiest, but the most flirtatious, cute, se- yeah, no, sexy. Do you want to come up for coffee? I don't drink coffee. I haven't got any. Is that that whole when they're sat in the car park? Uh, oh, that in, in Cod we trust. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lovely. It's wonderful. Wonderful glow. I like the 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 romance. I like. I think it's not overdone. It never. No. Just, it never um, takes yeah. away from the rest of the. Th- well, that's actually. I. It was really weird because I was looking at for clips and stuff. And yeah, no, the American trailer just puts it as a romance. 
the there's an American DVD release which is Hugh McGregor and Gloria Fitzgerald, Tara Fitzgerald playing Gloria from di completely different films photoshopped in and they're not wearing any band stuff. And it's like, they're going to turn the town upside down. I was like, what? What? This isn't the film. Can you imagine buying that DVD and then this coming on? <laughs> It'd be very disappointing. <laughs> what they're doing? No, why, are, why are they down a bit? <laughs> I feel that Americans, they won't be able to understand the word they were saying. No. Um, I have seen Bill Hader. Bill Hader's a cinephile. And he loves Kez. He's talked about <laughs> Kez a bunch. Right. And he's always like, have you, have you seen Kez? And everyone's like, no, I've never heard of it. And I go, I've seen Kez, Bill. I'll be your friend. I, I really <laughs> like Kez. I love you, Bill Hader. You're wonderful. <laughs> you're the best part of every film you're in. Uh, and Barry's great. Scab. Call me it. You can <laughs> change it. I, careful with words like that. Fine, then. You're a fucking wanker. It's more like <laughs> it. He's an um, uh, old-style band leader and has dedicated his life to music. He can't see anything else other than music being important. Phil Ormondroyd, he's the son of the band leader that Pete Postlethwaite's playing. Uh, he's a miner who, in the 84 strike, was imprisoned. He, uh, he owes 10 grand to uh, a pair of loan sharks, which he can't pay. So uh, they give him a little calling card present, as you can see there. And he loses his wife, kids, house, self-respect, hope, tries to hang himself. Cheery little number, really. Stand by to shoot. So do your best to enjoy yourselves, folks who are watching, in the difficult circumstances in which we find ourselves. Stand by. Here we go. I told family friend Mark that we were doing breast off and that's the line he quoted straight away. <laughs> um, I, I think I, what well, I'll say it. I'll say it now. Okay. I'd like to. I, you're welcome. I'd like to think Pete Postlethwaite is the best part of this film, hmm. but for me, it's Steve Tompkinson because I think this is the best thing he's ever done. Oh yeah. Would you not say this is the best thing Pete Postlethwaite has ever done? Yes, but. <laughs> This is, this is... I do have this in, in, yeah. in Tom's big question, but we'll do it now. Oh, yeah. I've, I've just put who's the best performance in this film. I it's... didn't limit it, limit it to those two, but like we can limit it to those two. Yeah, it's Steve for me. It's yeah. got to be. I, I mean, you know I'm a diehard Steve Tompkinson fan. I like to see him in Educating Rita. I think, yeah, I think it didn't get any Oscar nominations. We'll get to Oscar travesty soon, but um, I didn't get anything. I think for me, Postle's wait for supporting Tom Linson for best actor. Mm. I didn't look at um, BAFTAs. Let's have a look at what other awards. You you talk about the, how much you love Steve Thomas. I really like Steve Thomas. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do a side one on Pete Postlethwaite. He's a good guy. Okay. I think previously I've mentioned that one of our quiz names was Ken Dog's Dad's Dog's Dad. And Dodds has dog dad. But we've also used um, Pete Postlethwaite's preposterous posthumous pizza party. Mm. I like Pete Postlethwaite's bike. Because <laughs> <laughs> I love any time he's on his bike in this film. It's great. I like, yeah. I've by, got that in my notes. My nominee. Matt Herman, uh, nominated for best screenplay at the BAFTAs. Didn't win. Uh... All right, lads. Rodrigo's Concerto, Doris Jews. Hugh McGregor, 
Oh, he he won ALFS British Actor of the Year in '97, which was, I believe, Train Spotting as well. Oh, there you go. So that's a oh shit a brick. Mm. Where's where is it? Give me a year. Well, it wasn't 2009, was it? That's when the, the DVD came out. Oh, very annoying. Go on, tell me when it tell me when it came out. Not, uh, 96. Oh, there we go. What a year. Yeah. What a year for McGregor. <laughs> what a year for McGregor. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised, actually. The BAFTAs didn't give it loads. Yeah, because we usually, we, we love our own kind. We love our own. <laughs> well, that's why when it won everything at, uh, for King's Speech, because uh, it literally won everything at the BAFTAs. Yeah. And I thought, oh, it's all right. Social Network will still win. <laughs> Social Network will still win at the Oscars. No. no. King's Speech Colin. again. Jesus Christ. Do you not like the King's Speech? No. Oh, that is a shame, because I love the King's Speech. I, I think King's Speech is better than the Social Network. No, you don't. <laughs> Do you prefer it? I think, yeah. I do love, I, I'm not saying Social Network's bad. Hmm. I think, they're, they're, without a shadow of, what's your favourite Firth? Oh, I'm not ignoring you. I'm grabbing mine. I think it. You know what? I think he's very good in. Um, what's the Mark Mark Strong one with Nicole? Before I go to sleep. I think he's very good in that. Gosh. So let me just get a. Let me just get some Matt. Um, My favourite Colin Firth film <laughs> is a single man. One of the most beautiful films ever made. Uh, buy the Blu-ray. It comes with a lovely little booklet. Uh, I, I, I'm going to schedule this in. I adore a single man. I, I, Julianne Moore does a wonderful British accent, actually. Uh, Nicholas Holtz, young in it. Uh, directed by, um, what do you call it? Tom Ford, the fashion man. Um, Matthew Good plays his dead gay lover. Um, and there is a single scene in a single man, sorry, father, that um, is a single is a single shot, doesn't break, and it's just Colin getting a phone call. I'm not going to tell you what phone call. And um, if anybody who watches that single minute and dares to tell me that he's better in another film, <laughs> you included, <laughs> um, you'll be desperately wrong. But, um, I'm just looking here at uh, some films he's in. We you do obviously love any of these. Oh yeah, Centurions, love that. <laughs> well, that's because of Rupert. Rupert's great. Rupert, at that. Rupert, yes. Uh, <laughs> but a famous hater of Colin Firth. But then they're the friends now, aren't they? They're friends. They're friends. I don't know. Uh, I like uh, Gambit. <laughs> Gambit's great. Oh, I haven't thought um, about Gambit <laughs> for years. Um, Cohen Brothers script Gambit. Is it? Oh, I'm sorry you can tell, can't it? Yeah. Um, I've not seen Railway Man. Um, he's in a lot of films with Nicole Kidman, isn't he? He's in two. He's in three. Don't tell me what's the third. Don't tell me what the third is. Railway Man, Before I Go to Sleep. Oh, give me a clue. Clever. Clever? Give me a year. Oh, um, 2016. 2016? Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, it's that, no, it's that movie that, that was, that was, oh, it's genius, isn't it? Yeah, About Truman Capote, that, that just came yeah. and, yeah, that was like a straight to Sky Cinema movie. That oh, doesn't sorry. count. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Um, oh, you Nanny McPhee. I love Nanny McPhee. I very much like Nanny McPhee. <laughs> well. I also like Nanny McPhee too. I can feel it in my bones. Starring Hugh um, McGregor. Hugh McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone full circle. There we go. Um, for the rest of my specific favourite parts, um, Chuckles Watch, where, he's, where Kid Bangs watch too soon. Yeah. Just a great gag. Land of open bloody glory, eh?
Uh, I love the cash in the receipt. That that really got me this time. I nearly, I nearly yeah. had a week. I mean, I had to obviously save my tears for. Um, I thought music mattered. Uh, does it bollocks? Uh, I had to, I had to save my tears. But um, the cash in the receipt and just the wonderful flick with Sue Sue Johnson of royal family fame. Rest in peace, Carolina Hearn. Um, lovely, lovely stuff. Uh, Harvest Festival, as we previously alluded yeah. to. Uh, oh, and they soon have all opened, called them the Tory Party. Uh, and then, can you name <laughs> the three the three people he mentions? Shouldn't oh. I? Um, John Lennon. Yeah. Good yeah. choice. Thank you. And he opened, not you. you. Not you. Oh, uh, all right. <laughs> Phil, Stephen Tom, Tom Kinson, not Tom Linson. Is there a Stephen Tomlinson? Oh, or have people just along the years just got the dropped the care? But um yeah, now John Lennon, the three guys from Ainsley Pitt who died in a tragic yeah. accident. Uh Pete Postlethwaite, they're even thinking of taking my dad and Margaret Bloody Thatcher lives. There. Brilliant. <laughs> it's like I'm co- oh it's great. And also, I just you just can't be. We're going empty bed. You, oh, where's Mr. Roman Roy? Where's Mr. Roman Roy? You sound like you sound like the the Cravendale advert, Barry Biscuit Boy. Remember I that? It, no. <laughs> Disturbing. Cravendale's good. I mean, I don't like I, cheese. I don't it. like any cheese. But when it's, it comes it's to a milk, ah, well. Leave it out. So you've uh, <laughs> you've been out there, haven't you? Yeah. When it comes uh, to cheese adverts, you can't beat. Not Philadelphia. What did what did Pete Postlethwaite do? Cathedral. Yeah, cath- yeah, cathedral, wasn't it? Cathedral cheese. It's not called cathedral Cathed- cheese. Cathedral city. Cathedral city. What Pete Postlethwaite cheese? Cathedral city, isn't it? Pete Postlethwaite. What a great name as well. What a great Cheese. Cheese, Pete. Fossil sweet. Yeah, cathedral, <laughs> cathedral cheese. Oh, and they've... Ah. And they've, they've changed... Yes. Because they said that they wouldn't um, ever not use the Pete Fossil sweet voice. And now they're president. Butter. Mm. President. President. Good butter. President. Not as I've good as Anchor. Not as That's good it. as Anchor. A- Anchor, Lurpak, nothing else. Yeah, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> A selection of butter. Will's more general favourite part of the film. Here we go. Um, first time that Gloria plays. Wonderful. Um, I love it when they're outside the hospital mm. playing for him. And then at the end, they all turn their helmet lights off. Yeah. This band behind me will tell you that that trophy means more to me than out else in the old world. But they'd be wrong. Truth is, I thought it mattered. I thought that music mattered. But does it bollocks? Not compared to how people matter. Us winning this trophy won't mean bugger all to most people. But us refusing it, like what we're going to do now, well then it becomes news, doesn't it? You see what I mean? That way I'll not just be talking to myself, will I? I like that. It's very nice. And then nurse comes out. <laughs> Ten her on. Do Ten her on myself. Like um, I love it. The uh, Royal Albert Hall, when um, Steve is um, baby crying in the audience, and he <laughs> look on his face like, who the fuck? Yeah, and that's, then he not, his that's not the best moment of the film, <laughs> I have to say. I, <laughs> it's... <laughs> The entire Royal Albert Hall, he is one baby crying. She's right up front row. It's not the best. I, I didn't put it in change, but I thought, <laughs> oh, come on, Mark, you could have done a touch better there. <laughs> um, I love Steve making trumpet noises on the back of the bike. Yes. Oh, it's <laughs> lovely. I'm not being ignorant. I'm just getting it next. Getting Oscars ready. Continue. Thank you. Uh, I like it when he gets his new trumpet. The, the, oh, the, the look yes. in his, oh, he's so happy. 
Um, orange juice. Just, just saying, orange juice. It's, it's a great gag. It's fun. It's fun. Um, the the whole redundancy pay package discussion in the pub, and then the having to go in queue up. That that whole bit's lovely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not lovely. It's heartbreaking, but yeah, it's not good. Okay, oh, then. It's Fargo, yeah. It's Fargo. It's English patients. Oh. Jerry Maguire. Oh. It's secrets and lies. This oh. is a stacked, absolutely yeah. stacked year that uh, we will be returning to on multiple times in the future. Um, however. I have to say, I completely agree. I think the English patient, I love Fargo. I love Jerry Maguire. I love Secrets and Lies. I've not seen the English patient. I've scared, it's good. It, I've, so, it's, so therefore, it's, it's, I would definitely put Fargo as best picture because it's one of my, it's in my top 20. I do, oh, you're making me question. It's my favourite Coen Brothers, Tom. The thing is, Depends how you want to look at it. Because you could look at this in the same vein as Pulp Fiction versus Forrest Gump. I think English Patient is an infinitely better film than Forrest Gump. I think that English Patient gets a bad rap because of that Seinfeld episode where Elaine thinks it's boring yeah. and, every, and everybody thinks, oh, it's so boring. But actually, English Patient isn't boring at all. And I, I think it's a beautiful lovely, obviously quite heartbreaking film in the marvellous David Lean tradition of an epic. And so you look at English Patient, it's a sweeping epic romance set, <laughs> set uh, just after wartime, uh, up again, similar to Forrest Gump, a big sweeping epic, you know, a bit whimsical. Then you've got independent movie, um, which everybody loves with director with a director and writer that will go on well he still hasn't won best director as tarantino has he shambolically no. yeah um and similar that year pulp fiction won screenplay what's the one oscar that fargo gets screenplay and actually this is exactly like 1994 because if you you could say jerry Maguire is very similar to shawshank crowd pleasing yeah. film that doesn't sacrifice quality I think, again, Shawshank's far better than Jerry Maguire, but <laughs> I very much like Jerry Maguire. Um, it's then, a question, though. Is, yeah, does, does the English patient have Steve Buscemi? No. It does have Christian Scott Thomas. It, oh, I do like Christian Scott Thomas. And it does have Ralph Fiennes as a Burns victim. Oh. oh. And it has Willem Dafoe, Will. Oh, now you... No, I... I'm sticking with Fargo. I'm sticking I with think, Fargo. I think come English patient time, you're going to be like, oh, may, maybe. <laughs> you, you, won't, you won't back down. And this was obviously when um, the Directors Guild hadn't changed yet. Uh, so two people couldn't direct a film. <laughs> so for the uh, original, for the early um, Coen Brothers movies, it, they, they swapped titles. So... Mm. Uh, technically, Joel directed Fargo, but they didn't. They both directed it, but yeah. it was an it was an odd tame. Uh, do we, what what we, what we bumping here then uh, for Stephen Tomlinson? I think uh, Kimson. What for best actor? Um, I think you can get rid of Woody Harrelson in Woody, People versus yeah. Larry Flint. Get I enjoy the People versus Larry Flint, but it's not the best. And I think we uh, both thought no. very good in Sling Blade. I say I'm not getting rid of. I'll never get rid of Billy Bob. He's great. <laughs> Have you watched Sling Blade? No. It's quite. It's a good. Uh, good film. Um, it's a good, interesting performance. Uh, but Jeffrey Rushing Shine. Oh, that's a good picture. <laughs> oh. There you go. That must have been when he was doing Einstein. I. <laughs> um, this is easier for me. Oh, or is it? Armin Muller style, drop for shine, get Pete in. Um, however, I think my winner for best supporting actor here is actually Edward Norton for Primal Fear. You have yet to see Primal Fear, mm. and so actually we're gonna we'll table this conversation. And you, you know how I'm hit and miss with Ed Norton. Yes, you are. Uh, 
the Primal Fear episode comes after Jerry Maguire. So once we have rewatched Jerry Maguire and Primal Fear, I think we'll have a good go at that. Uh, but screenplay, I think you can get rid of Lone Star. I think it's an okay film, but it's it's nowhere near brass top. But also, yeah. you know, in reality, it's not going to get. It's not going to win anything, is it? It's too British. It's it's too. British that Yorkshire. isn't London, yeah, yeah. It because too British is actually a good thing. You look at Gosford Park, <laughs> didn't win much, but it, it was nominated for a bunch. You look at um, obviously King's Speech, uh, Chariots of Fire. These are huge, epic, big British movies, and uh, they 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 swept. World's favorite building or set. Hey, it's, it's a bit of it's a dour. A yeah, it's a dour. Was it one, filmed at it? National Coal Mining Museum? I it want to is, say it was. It yeah, was. Yes, I the wanna... suicide definitely was. Yeah, I'll say that then. <laughs> yeah, everybody uh, should Phil, go to the National yeah. Coal Mining Museum. Phil suicide, and you should recreate Stephen Tompkinson's. Don't kill yourself. <laughs> no, it's not advice. Uh. <laughs> uh, best single minute. We've talked about the speech. Yeah, actually. We haven't talked about the speech. We haven't. We haven't talked about the speech. Here's the speech. Where is it? Here's the speech. You see what I mean? Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll, I won't do it all. This band behind me, I'll tell you that that trophy means more to me than hotels in the whole world. Well, they'd be wrong. Truth is, I thought it mattered. I thought that music mattered. What does it, bollocks? Not compared to our people matter. Us winning this trophy won't mean bugger all to most people, but us refusing it, like what we're going to do now, well, then it becomes news, doesn't it? You see what I mean? Our industry, and not just our industry, our communities, our homes, our lives, on the name of progress, and all for a few lousy bob. I'll tell you something else you might not know as well. A fortnight ago, this band's pit closed. Another thousand men lost their jobs, and that's not all they lost. Most of them lost the will to win a while ago. A few of them even lost the will to fight. But when it comes to losing the will to live, to breathe, the point is, if this lot were seals or whales, you'd all be in bloody up in arms. But they're not, are they? They're just ordinary common or garden honest decent human beings, and not one of them with an ounce of bloody orb left. Oh, aye! They can knock out a bloody good tune. But what the fuck does that matter? Where are we putting this in the all-time movie speeches? Top ten. <laughs> it's up there. It's definitely <laughs> up there. Uh, back to, back to, yeah, no, single minute. Uh, it, he rehearsed it with Mike Heyman. None of the cast heard it before Pete did it there. I think it's a very good decision, yeah. You'll see it on their faces. It's terrific. Um, going to see him at the hospital playing Danny Boy. Yeah. As Stephen Tomkinson said, when he read it in the script, he thought it was the most gratuitous <laughs> and obvious use of the song Danny Boy in the world. And then suddenly, when he heard the Colliery Band playing it, and they were all stood outside, none of them were looking each other in the eye because they were all tearing up. And I have to agree. Uh, and then the bus... I very much enjoy them all busing down. <laughs> this is great, yeah. I uh, very much enjoy them all busing down. <laughs> great stuff. Uh, any nominations for a single minute that we haven't touched on? Uh, no, no, I've got speech at end, uh, Bill's speech, mm. and uh, hospital as my three. That's pretty good. Back to best line then. So God was creating man, and his little assistant came up to him and he said, Hey, we've got all these bodies left, but we're right out of brains. We're right out of hearts, and we're right out of vocal cords. And God said, Fuck it. So I'm up anyway, smack smiles on the faces and make them talk out their asses. And lo, God created the Tory party. I want to <laughs> it's be great. I it's want to great. be a politician just so I can knock that one out in the house of parliament. <laughs> Oh, stand up. Uh, the Honourable Gentleman, uh, you said, yes, uh, I just Oda, got a few things. Oda. What's his name? But Burko. He's gone now, Stop, I think. That's it, yeah. Oda. 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 
Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, eh, ladies? Aye, but we can do without the drugs and rock and roll. You know, a, you know, a really good line, and I, and I feel it coming in your changes, but I very much like the child, Shane, saying, how the hell do you die happy? I just, I, I, that's, when you break that down, that like he wants him to die happy, yeah. how do you die happy? Lovely. Right. I've got, um, it's a bloody euphonium. I like that one. Can't beat it. It's a nice runner. Um, I've got, um, is this man bothering you? Of course he is, is my dad. That's a good one. Um, and the bit when they're on about, um, that, that actually main job, isn't it? I'm a miner, a miner. You remember them, love, dinosaurs, dodos. I, I love that. <laughs> is this the colliery band rehearsal? No, love. Bands on Tuesdays. Tonight's origami class. It was a story that just touched the humanity in, in everyone. The fact that a lot of these mines, even after closure, are still represented by the colliery bands. They play loud and proud on behalf of all those communities. Mark was, was terribly keen that we not only integrated with the band, but we integrated with the community in Grimethorpe to let them know that this was an honest portrayal of their story and all the grief that they'd suffered and the heartache and the, the, the true sort of British underdog spirit that prevailed. It is a good one. Uh, two, two more. Uh, the only reason I get up in the morning is to see if my looks changed and it never bloody has. <laughs> Painful stuff. It's these little throwaway Yorkshire lines that are so full of pain when you just stop a minute and read them, but they fly I've by. Yeah. I've just remembered one Go from on. opening. It's um, it's a you had you had a behind bus station. No, I didn't. You told us you did. No, it was top half only. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, great it's stuff. Good. Great opening to them. It is good. Uh, and then once again, I'll have you know that girl blows a flugel like a dream. Oh, Danny Overdrive at your age, and he don't get it. What? Arkwright Travel, New York, London, Paris, and Grimley, but mainly Grimley. <laughs> <laughs> great stuff, it's great stuff. And next up on the categories, we've got What's the Change? You got any? Oh, it's perfect. Go I mean, we could, talk, we could talk about Ewan or. Yeah, Ewan's but, accent has some dicky parts, but I think he does all right. But I, I cannot fault this movie at all. No, yeah. I've got a re um, real pernickety stuff. Uh, speaking of Ewan's accent, um, have you seen Little Voice? I haven't. The, um, also directed by Mark Herman, uh, from the Jim Cartwright play with Jane Horrocks and Michael Caine and Brenda Blethyn and Jim Broadbent and Hugh McGregor, uh, set in Scarborough, and Phil Jackson's in it as well. Uh, great film. It'll, it'll be coming up. <laughs> so, uh, lovely stuff. Um, really pernickety stuff. Uh, I th she just, she's just very obvious. I, I thought they could have thought of a better line, or either, or she could have delivered it better it, instead of. Uh, Don't it matter about that reviewer thingy? Just, just, just change it to. I thought I heard something about a review. It just, it just is better than a rolling her eyes and going, uh, "Oh, that reviewer thingy." Um. I've always thought that Pete's a bit too aggressive with that woman who's like, tell him to shut up. And he goes, if you tell him to be quiet, you'll wake up in the next ward. Go, yeah, we, All right, I calm down. That, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was expect, you expect after that him to go, sorry, love. Like yeah, that. Or, but just no. say, or just say, don't you dare. Or just something like that, just like yeah. with his eyes still closed, going, don't you dare. Yeah, that's a lot better than, if you don't know, you'll wake up the next one. <laughs> and also, I'd like a shot of other people in the hospital, like Shawshank, people going... Reacting to, to him. Yeah, 
No, no, reacting to like the music outside because oh, oh, you, nice, the, yeah. the thought does cross your mind of, all right, it's good for Danny, but it is still midnight and they're playing Danny Boy. It's not like they're doing punk rock, but <laughs> it could wake some people. I'd have a few shots of people going like, oh, this is lovely. Anyway, they're my, they're my changes. They're very finickety. I love this one. Uh, I'd What's there from it. your notes? Well, it's a good thing to mention. Um, Brassed off, inspired. My favorite, well, my favorite, three in my top five. One of my very favorite Mitchell and Webb sketches. I'm a big fan it. of Mitchell and Webb. Oh, you'll have to see. Have you seen Mitchell and Webb? I've seen a few. So, so all on Netflix, I advise you watch it all. It's one of. Oh, I've seen the ones um, where, 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 uh, what's it called? Alan Armstrong. <laughs> Not Alan Armstrong. What's he called? Alexander Armstrong's having the affair with his wife and he's always oblivious. Harvest Festival. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know too much about Harvest Festival. But I do know a story about God. Ooh. So God was creating man, all right? And his little assistant came up to him and he said, Hey, we've got all these bodies left, but we're right out of brains, we're right out of hearts, and we're right out of vocal cords. And God said, Fuck it, sew them up anyway, smack smiles on their faces and make them talk out their asses. And lo, God created the Tory party. <laughs> Is that Mitchell and Webb? I don't think it is. No, that's Alex. That's Armstrong and that's, that's Armstrong. Armstrong and Miller. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, Mitchell uh, and Webb. Mitchell and Webb. But basically, um, it's like a, a movie trailer, but it's it's based on Brassed Off, and it's about uh, a Yorkshire town where it's closing, and so they decide to get a cricket team together, and they're like, "Cricket here in Yorkshire? Don't be soft." And it's just really dramatic. And this guy at the bar, someone turns around and, and it's David Mitchell who goes, did, say, I say, did I hear somebody say cricket? And like, do you know about it? I only used to coach the Manchester United team. It's, probably, it, it's as if it was written by people who know nothing about cricket. cricket it, remember, the bat, the, bat isn't, what, it, the bat isn't narrow. It's very, very wide. It's great. Cricket, cricket's oh, well loved up in York. Love cricket. It's... This. Great stuff. Anything else from your notes, William? No. no. I've got a few. Uh, anytime Pete Possible throw it on his bike. I love <laughs> uh no, tonight's on a garmin love bands on Tuesday. <laughs> that great <laughs> wide shot of all the bands. Um anytime I see what's it called? Bobby Ball. Is it is it called Bobby Ball? Is it called Bobby? But no, no, Bobby Ball's different. Uh, let, oh, let me get it. Brass uh, uh, off. Uh, the guy, the guy who's um, voting, who's who's on like the board, and is in Phoenix yeah. Nights. Oh, Bernard Wrigley. That's it. And I cannot look at him without <laughs> going. <laughs> it's a ten foot cock and balls. <laughs> so this time I, I were watching. Um, yeah, I was watching. What do you call it? Uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, other, other. Uh... I love that they're all smoking. There's a, there's a, there's a texture. Yeah. There's a texture to it. Uh, whether, whether all, whether all smoking, and it's uh, very specific and um, and truthful to to the time. Uh, it's 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 marvelous. It's very good. Wakefield Prison. I love it. I love it when they mention Wakefield yeah. Prison. <laughs> we, I, That's what, what we're famous yeah, for. We're famous. I took a, I took a, um, to see Wakefield Prison as one of the as the one of the points. stops on your tour of York. You took your girlfriend on one of your Yorkshire stops, a drive by Wakefield Prison. <laughs> yeah. well, <laughs> she's still with me. What can we say? In all, in all honesty, we were meant to turn into Mackey's at um, Wakefield. 
Yeah, but we I, I got directions wrong and we, we said on the left hand side, so we had to go up by a hospital and down. <laughs> Wait for the prison away. So I thought, well, we might we're there make prison. <laughs> Was Shipman in there? Um he what Yorkshire Ripper uh, Yorkshire Ripper are in there. He's gone now. I think he's gone to another medical place. Um just... No, we've had we've had we've had all worse. It's you get we don't get nice ones in, in Wakefield. In Wakefield. As opposed to those nice prisons. Uh, not everybody stands. I love that it's not a gigantic standing ovation after the big yeah. speech. I love that it's a few people. And it's, it's, it's like uh, the end of Dead Poets Society. Dead Poets Society is a very different film. If at the end, all 20 people are stood on those benches, they're not. They are five people. Yeah. I think it's five. Anyway. But I love that, yeah, not everybody stands. Also an ending corner, obviously. <laughs> they, they lose. I don't know. Uh, fun facts. Pete Puzzlesworth was heavily criticised by ex-miners for claiming he supported the 1984 mine strike, but believed people should never burn coal. What? In, what he doesn't like so he's in using fossil fuels. He supported the 84 strike, yeah, but believed people should shouldn't burn coal. I mean, it was a different time, wasn't it? Um, mm. I I love coal. I when I, when I have the chance, I will get a whole shovel full of coal on fire um, because it's just lovely. Rather than yeah, environmentally friendly stuff, it's, it's not Yorkshire, is it? But no, um, there's nothing wrong with being aware about alternative fuel. But it's just, mm. yeah. We'll find any any excuse to have a go at someone about the yeah, strikes. True. Here's two possible options for Gloria, which I just don't see either. Kate Winslet and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Catherine Zeta, definitely no. Yeah, you hate Catherine Zeta-Jones. Oh no, reason. I love Catherine Zeta. Oh, I'm wrong. Then. Um, in in some things, um, I I like I'm very strange. I adore her. Uh, but in some things, you just think, oh, Catherine. Like, Red 2. <laughs> <laughs> One of previous guest Ava Robinson's sneaky favourite films. For some it's reason, great. she loves it's, Red 2. I love two. it. I love John Malkovich oh. faking his death. It's oh, great. I'll get you two together to do a Red 2 episode, because <laughs> I won't be joining you. The film has been mentioned several times in debates in British Parliament. Uh, usually in reference to the economic hardship that accompanied the pit closures. And that's it. Not many fun facts, I'm afraid. This time. Well, it's not really a fun topic, is it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Tom's big question, though. We've done best performance. Yeah. Best pit. What? Oh, in best general. pit movie. <laughs> best pit movie. This, I mean, it is this, but let's just play a devil's advocate. Did you like Pride? Not seen it. Not seen oh, it. Pride was all right. I enjoyed Pride. Um, obviously, Billy Elliot. Yep. I think Billy Elliot's your second in command, isn't it? But yeah, Billy Elliot. Um, Blood Diamond with uh, <laughs> <laughs> Leonardo's questionable <laughs> South African accent. Oh, it was pretty bad. And what's your favourite piece of music well played in the performed in the film? Not uh, it's a, yeah. Yeah. It's my my favourite is Land of Hope and Glory, but I think yeah. performance wise, I, 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 Orange Juice is good, but I think that I final guess you have to say William Tell, yeah, no, that I'll final William, William Tell when when you get yeah, the big, <laughs> it's good, it's very good. It's the most passionate one they do. It sure is. And I love that, you know, he's, uh, he's behind you. And uh, it turns. Well, that's, that's yeah. the, I've missed that, I mean, yeah. When, turn when back, Pete turns turn back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he should be playing his trombone. What's he doing? He's just saying. Uh, one more. <laughs> uh, all right, then. Cl uh, closing line, all of them. Land of hope and bloody glory. <laughs> and those title cards just make me even more upset now. It's not 996 anymore, and they're all shut. What a shit time. Well, what a good film. Will, have you any final thoughts on this wonderful film? Everyone should watch it. 
first mm. of all, in order to understand my accent more. This is yeah. the thing I want. Like, I've come. I've come to a northern university, which attracts a lot of southern people. Oh my God, you like, ended up with I, a southern girlfriend. I tell me about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is the film that I show to people. I'll show them this, or I'll show them some like. Uh, meaning of life or something. Yeah. I'll Kez is the deep end. You can't, you can't just throw him in with Kez. No, you can't. <laughs> he was just explaining the plot. Brastoff, full Monty, and um, I'd say Little Voice. Little Voice has got some great yeah. songs. Four Lions. Four Lions. I, I, I show him for, especially being in Sheffield. Meadow All. Meadow L. Hey. 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 <laughs> Never go to Meadow All on a Saturday. It's more like Meadow L. Cues, cues, cues. Wonderful stuff. Any final thoughts while on this marvellous movie? Glorious. It is indeed. Uh, I couldn't put it better myself.